Hi, I'm Sunny Brenneman, a researcher with the Chicago Zoological Society. This video is about contaminants that we humans allow to get into the ocean. They can harm the dolphins we've been studying since 1970 near Sarasota, Florida, including the most vulnerable members of the community, the newborn calves. Contaminants often don't go away for many years. They are harmful because dolphins eat fish that have eaten smaller fish or shrimp that have eaten smaller creatures or plants. Because smaller organisms eat or absorb contaminants, dolphins get a concentrated dose of it in their prey fish. Over time, these contaminants can build up. One group of contaminants is called PCBs. They were used widely around the world by industries to make transformers and cooling fluids, and PCBs were banned in the 1970s. But they don't disappear quickly. They still remain in the environment, harming wildlife. The dolphins of Sarasota Bay have PCBs in their bodies. In adult male dolphins, the amounts of PCBs can be high enough to cause health effects. For example, we suspect this is one reason why FB28 suffers from a long-term skin disease. In dolphins, contaminants like PCBs accumulate in the blubber. That's the fat layer under the skin. Pollutants can come out of the blubber and make their way into a mother's fat-rich milk. A calf drinking its mother's milk may get contaminant levels that are high enough to kill the calf. In Sarasota Bay, first-time mothers such as Annie often lose their first calf. Shortly before Annie gave birth for the first time, the PCB level in her body was more than double the threshold for health problems. Her calf died within several months of birth. So why is this important? Well, contaminants are impacting dolphins. When you think about it, though, dolphins can be indicators of how healthy our environment is. They eat the same fish we do. If contaminants are bad for dolphins, that's bad for all of us. So limiting contaminants in the environment is good for sea creatures, including dolphins, as well as for you and me. Want to learn more? Go to sarasotadolphin.org to learn about the bottlenose dolphins we study, and about how you can help with dolphin conservation around the world.